Bernie Sanders campaign manager Faiz Shakir appeared on CNN and he was asked about Bernie Sanders' claim that corporate media is biased against him. And he had a pretty interesting conversation with CNN's Brian Stelter, where he brought up some of the points and criticisms of corporate media that I've been talking about on this program for years. And this was fascinating. Let's watch. Uh, what is the, the heart of the critique about what Sanders calls the corporate media? What do you want people like me to do yeah. differently? Well, Brian, this isn't a personal commentary on you or any other journalist. There's many wonderful, talented journalists out there. But in about you know a minute or so or two minutes or so, you're going to cut to commercial breaks and you're going to see some pharmaceutical ads. You're going to see a lot of ads that are that are basically paying your bills and the bills of of this uh, the entire media enterprise. And what that ends up doing is incentivizing you and others to make sure that you're asking the questions and driving the conversations in certain areas and not in certain areas. Right now. You know, Bernie well, what Sanders evidence on a do you have across. of that? What evidence do you have of that? I don't actually know what ads run during the breaks. I actually don't see the commercials. I don't know what runs. And I, I'd already, so I reached out to Phil Griffin, the head of MSNBC, and mm -hmm. happy to talk to Jeff Zucker and others. It isn't about you, Brian, but about how these media structures are set and operated and the biases that I believe are in, embedded within them about what that's they really decide are segments worthy. Right. Are, are, I think that's are really what segments the worthy systems. of covering and what aren't? So what do you think is yeah. not being covered that needs to be covered more? What are those topic areas? Well, I mean, one, one classic area, of course, is, you know, we're, we're going across the border right now to talk about prescription drugs. Do you know why you pay so much more, 10 times more in America mm. on prescription drugs than any other country? Does anyone know that or understand why? Do you know what the Trump administration is doing about that? Do you even know who the head of the Health and Human Services Secretary is? Do you know his background, that he worked in the pharmaceutical industry? I mean, these, like, I think Donald Trump turns out these tweets and attempts to distract all of us. And there isn't a basic conversation around the fact that he's betraying the working class by having selected a group, a group of people to run his government who come from industry, who benefit industry. And that story is not told. And why don't you that know all that from the press? I mean, don't you know all that from reporting? No, I, <laughs> that's not how I know it. I've done my own research. And we've done our own research to know by it. By reading stories. I, by reading news stories a few about segments. it. Yeah, and I would argue to you, and you know this well, Brian, that TV is a certain medium that has an influential power. And, I, and I'm making a, more of a critique here of what media, uh, TV media decides to cover. And it tends to be a game. It tends to be a gotcha. We're, I appreciate that Donald Trump's tweets are important, and we'll have a conversation about that. But it also belies a conversation that he doesn't want to have. And, and I think that that's what I think I, I, you know, me, Bernie Sanders, a lot of us feel yeah. uh, gets obfuscated is that the and things many that affect viewers real agree Americans' with you. lives. Right. Many viewers agree with you. This yeah. shiny objects, the sensationalism, it's a problem. You know, the, the, the question is whether it's, I think, effective for you all to call it out. Maybe it is. Trump has won support I, from his I, fans <laughs> by attacking the media. Maybe that's what you think will work as well. I, I mean, so we're not playing a game here, all right? It is, it is truly based out of conviction and sincerity that we do see biases operating against the campaign, but also against the issues we care deeply about. You rarely see pundits on TV talking about the value of Medicare for all. You see a lot of people criticizing Medicare for all. You don't see the people talking about the value of canceling all student debt. You see people criticizing it. And why is that, right? Just ask yourself. It's, you're taking on corporate power. You're taking on the established, uh, you know, establishment across the board. And all we're arguing for is can we have a fair shake? So that was great work to uh, Faiz. He said basically everything that I would have said had I been in that situation. So he first starts by calling out these perverse incentives that are created by advertising dollars going to CNN. Uh, because if you obviously have a large multinational corporation spending millions, potentially billion dollars, billions of dollars advertising on your network, you know, you might not necessarily be as inclined to criticize them as you would other companies. And then to that, Brian Stelter responded by saying, what evidence do you have of that? I don't actually see the commercials. Uh, first of all, common sense, because obviously if somebody gives you money, you're going to feel more inclined to be nice to them. Are you not? That's just human nature. Uh, second of all, even if you don't see the commercials and you probably don't even know all of CNN's advertisers, Brian Stelter, you were hired specifically because you won't rock the boat. Your bosses know that you're going to read whatever's on the teleprompter and you're not really going to challenge power in a meaningful way. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been hired. Because think about it. There's a reason why people like Medea Benjamin, for example, of Code Pink, hasn't been hired 
to be, you know, CNN's foreign policy correspondent. It's because the defense contractors that advertise on CNN probably wouldn't feel too comfortable spending money on a network if there was an explicitly anti-war message being broadcasted relatively frequently. They'd spend their money elsewhere. Now, since this is the case, this creates incentives for CNN to not hire people like Medea Benjamin. It's why MSNBC fired Phil Donahue for being against the Iraq war. It's why, you know, Gerald Friedman and Matt Brunig are never brought on to talk about health care. Because if they start bringing on these voices that actually say things that go against the interests of companies that may want to advertise on CNN, well, then that costs them money. Because if you are actually telling the truth about healthcare, for example, about Medicare for all, um, you don't even have to advocate for Medicare for all. But if you're just laying out the basic details and facts about Medicare for all, since the facts are not going to be beneficial to health insurance industry executives, well, then if CNN does that, for example, CNN will lose out on advertising dollars. They know this. Brian Stelter knows this. He's not dumb. He's not naive. It's just that he is... You know, he's in that bubble to where he truly probably believes that he's doing something great. And he's probably better than most CNN pundits, even though the bar is so low. But I mean, the point is that CNN, you know, it's not like they never do good work. It's just that they disproportionately, most of the time, will choose to play it safe. Now, Brian Stelter then actually surprisingly admitted that sensationalism is, in fact, a problem because sensationalism is what drives ratings, which means that advertisers flock to CNN in the event their ratings are high based on sensationalism because they want their ads placed on the networks with the most eyeballs watching. It's why advertisers continue to flock to Fox News in spite of all of the numerous controversies that you see with, you know, Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson espousing straight up just white supremacist rhetoric. The advertising dollars go where the eyeballs are. It's as simple as that. But an issue that's inherent with sensationalism is that when you have a sensationalist bias, does that yield you better ratings? Yes. But the issue is obvious. I mean, other more important news topics end up getting ignored for you to cover something that is just more sensationalist. For example, how often do we hear about the war in Yemen, the genocide that's being carried out by Saudi Arabia, and they're using our weapons? How often do we hear about the healthcare crisis? Not very frequently because, you know, these aren't necessarily the topics that are sexy, that will yield good ratings for CNN. So they stay focused on the more safer subjects that, you know, will get them the most ratings and in turn get them the most advertising dollars. You know, and the thing that was weird about this exchange was that Brian Stelter questioned whether or not it's effective to call out, you know, the sensationalism issue. In other words, he's asking, you know, is it helpful to your campaign to bring up, you know, some of these problems that are inherent with corporate media? That was kind of a weird question to ask. Basically saying, do you really think it's going to help you if you criticize me, someone in the mainstream media and the aggregate corporate media? That was weird. Um, but Faiz responded saying, you rarely see pundits on TV talking about the value of Medicare for all. You see a lot of people criticizing Medicare for all. And really, this is one of the main issues because it's not just that, you know, they're not talking positively about Medicare for all. They don't have to advocate for Medicare for all. They just are expected to lay out the details of Medicare for all, what it does and doesn't do. But they don't do that. Instead, the media, which is supposed to be educating people, is actively spreading misinformation, oftentimes pushing talking points that come directly from the health insurance industry. Why? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that they have advertisers in that industry. Now, again, you know, I don't expect Brian Stelter to know the ins and outs about all of the advertising dollars that are flowing to CNN, but I do expect his boss to know. I do expect executives at CNN to know. And certainly, if they need to, they can rein him in if he starts going too rogue and starts actually speaking too much truth to power. And towards the end, that's where I think that Faiz really nailed it because he said, look, this is what it's about. These networks, these corporate media news outlets, they don't want to challenge the status quo, which is why you oftentimes don't hear from voices that are really speaking truth to power. I mean, we never hear from uh, Bernie Sanders unless they're taking an adversarial stance against him. We're not hearing from progressives running for Congress like Michaela Wilkes, Anthony Clark, Shahid Buttar. We're not hearing from them. We're not hearing from people who are actually challenging the status quo. And it's because 
CNN doesn't want to challenge the status quo because there's this perverse incentive to put profits over educating the people. Like, ideally speaking, you know, the news, their job should be to educate people, right? That's their one job. Make people more educated so that way they have a, as much knowledge as possible when they enter the voting booth. But this just demonstrates how capitalism corrupts everything it touches. It's that corrosive. Because rather than focusing on the delivery of news, CNN is focused on ratings because they care more about profits. And, you know, news and corporate media isn't the only thing that capitalism has corrupted. It's corrupted our entire democratic process. So now money equals free speech. Like, do you understand the problem here? Now, the solution is, you know, we need to invest more in indie media as individuals. We need to try to support these shows and like them whenever they post videos. And the good thing about indie media is... We're not as susceptible to the forces of capitalism, but that's not to say that indie media is perfect because, you know, oftentimes these are channels like mine run by one person. So human error can and oftentimes is an issue. Oftentimes these news shows are personality driven. Oftentimes we have our own biases that may sully, you know, what we're trying to communicate with regard to information. You know, we still... There's this sensationalist bias in YouTube as well because we're trying to make sure that we put out video and news that generates clicks. So clickbait's a problem. So I mean, it's not perfect, but certainly indie media is better than corporate media in the sense that, you know, we are able to dissect the truth from the bullshit. So we can use, you know, a factual basis that's created by real journalists and then use our commentary to give people kind of like a jumping off point and get them to not maybe take what we say, but ideally to think for themselves and construct their own opinion and be more informed overall as they enter the voting booth. So overall, corporate media is garbage because, you know, we live in a capitalist system where we all have the desire to make money because our survival is contingent on us making money. And, you know, if you're already rich, then you want to make more money because that's just the perverse incentives that capitalism creates. And in corporate media, it's no different. Their goal is to make money, not to deliver the news, not to be objective, not to educate people. And so what Faiz is doing here is calling that out and saying, hey, do better. But it's tough. You know, how do you do better when their whole model and survivability hinges on them, you know, not speaking truth to power, not rocking the boat? It's tough. How do you get them to actually see the light? Well, we need indie media to grow. So, you know, they're forced to compete with us. But I mean, we're just <laughs> we're dwarfed in comparison with these corporate news shows. Right. We're dwarfed. They have billions of dollars. Uh, we don't have that. <laughs> we can't compete. Right. These are not uh, million dollar enterprises here. These indie news shows are scraping by with Patreon dollars and advertising from uh, YouTube. The good news is, you know, that tie between advertisers and us is severed by using YouTube as kind of a proxy. But I mean, at the same time, you know, it's not it's not reliable. So it's just it's tough, right? The goal ultimately is to get people to think for themselves based on an educated opinion that they form. But, you know, when there's so many bad faith actors, so many capitalistic forces that want them to take the position that would yield, you know, a profit for them, whatever special interest that may be, you know, people are getting conflicting opinions on things that may not necessarily be in their interest. So it's tough. We're fighting information warfare here and a gigantic disinformation campaign, but we've just got to keep pushing through and, you know, shining a light on this just so that way maybe the viewers of CNN see, oh, maybe advertising dollars do create perverse incentives for CNN, and maybe I shouldn't take everything they say as gospel. If we can just kind of get people to think in that way, maybe plant that seed, I think overall we'll all be better off. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher. <laughs>